Hey there, welcome back to Invisible Machines. I'm Josh Tyson, a contributing editor here at UX Magazine. And with me in the studio right now is our resident visionary, Rob Wilson, CEO and co-founder of OneReach.ai. Rob and I, we're excited because we're gonna talk to you all about agent runtime environments. If you're, if you're a business leader or a CTO or a CIO, you're probably thinking a lot about AI adoption and hopefully you've heard of agent runtimes. If you haven't, don't feel bad because we're gonna, we're gonna bring you up, up to speed right now. So maybe we'll start with what, what, is a, what is an agent runtime? An agent runtime solves the problem of having a place for your agents to get work done. And I think the most important thing is what's really hard to explain about runtimes is it's sort of a, it's sort of a problem you're going to have. It's, it's like trying to explain to somebody why they need an operating system when they're just wrapping their head around what a computer is. There is a ton of potential in agents as people have come to kind of vaguely understand what those things are. But fundamentally at an architectural or software level, we're switching paradigms from giving machines instructions to providing machines with objectives and almost a list of like guardrails on what not to do. Like you could spend a huge amount of time writing stuff out in a specific instruction set that you would need to do for a computer to execute it in the past when now you can give it fewer instructions than most people require and it mm -hmm. will do a decent job of executing that. Well, that's a pretty big departure too from how people are used to thinking of software. We, we think of right. software as you, you create a program that does this very specific thing every time the, the way that you wanted it to work. And this, this is more open-ended. This is more convenient exactly. because you can give it objectives, but it also opens up this whole world of variables that you now have to figure out. And like a runtime almost helps you corral a lot of that, right? Yeah. So if you were thinking about it as a new type of application, Mm -hmm. which is a good way to think about it. It's probably more accurate to think about it than artificial intelligence. Just say it's a different type of application. What we see a lot of people doing is they're writing that new application, but putting it in into our old operating environment. Mm -hmm. So they take the new app, put it in our old runtimes. And it really does make sense that they need a new runtime, that the old runtime wasn't designed for it. They were designed for cookie cutter software that it's siloed. To get to so our old software, we go through menus and sub menus. Now you just talk to it and you completely bypass any of those menus. You just say, what were sales for last month? Mm. Boom, it might pop up a pie chart. And then we add the personalization component, which is in our old software, that pie chart is going to look the same no matter what user logged in and navigated to it. In our new yeah. software, that pie chart was conjured up with your specific context in mind. So that means that that pie chart might be relevant to your region or to your job or to some project space that you've created. And therefore, each UI is custom created on the fly versus we're all going to use the same UI. Our old operating system isn't going to work. We, now it's a network and an ecosystem mm -hmm. of different systems that provide a, a place for these things to work. Yeah, and personalization is such a, such a key piece of it, but it's a good one to look at because in order to create a personalized experience, you have to draw from so many different sources and tools to really put that together seamlessly for the end user. And that's the kind of complexity that I think businesses are stumbling around right now. So maybe we could talk just a little bit about some of the problems that business leaders are facing that a runtime exists to create feasibility around these like really difficult intersections of different technologies and, and business objectives. It's hard to simplify mm -hmm. this, right? Everybody wants the elevator pitch on what a runtime is, but again, like what's the elevator pitch on what an op what is an operating system mm -hmm. and why does a company need one? It's a long story. Suffice to say you need one. The question of whether you should build your own, you know, that's ultimately your call. But most people would say, why would I build my own operating system? In, in this environment, we're talking about the success of each of these applications will only be as good as the operating system or the runtime that they exist in very much like humans, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people think that, that when employees perform poorly, 
make mistakes, et cetera, that they just hired the wrong person. But I think if you've done this a long time and you've been in business and you're a mature leader, you understand that more times than not, it's the environment that's flawed, not the person. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal of companies, especially ones that want to scale, is how do you create an environment that even a teenager at a high school could perform the tasks, right? Um, mm -hmm. These are challenges for businesses that put the onus on their business value being the environment more than the people. Yes, we're as good as our people, but what makes these companies so valuable, what creates longevity within these companies is the fact that they create these environments that most any person could be successful within. It's mm. the same with, with a runtime. Think of it as that same environment for AI agents to be successful in. Um, it needs the context. It needs to know what the latest policies are. It needs to know who to ask questions of when it doesn't know answers. It needs human in the loop and escalation. It needs extra context for it to perform well. So when an agent project fails, it's usually not that there was something wrong with how the agent was built, but more something wrong with the environment that the agent was placed in to run. Yeah, that's interesting. And so you can think about too, like in terms of problems business leaders face, some of the problems that have endured runtimes kind of solve, they kind of force you to break things out of silos. They force you to look at your whole technology ecosystem in a more holistic manner. And it really is kind of about creating a technology environment that has guardrails built in, has opportunities to create canonical knowledge so that these these LLMs that are prone to hallucination now have reliable knowledge bases that they can go to. So they're more often than not providing the correct answer. There's all sorts of stumbling blocks that I think people have tripped over as they've, as they tried to implement AI agents and the runtime is uh -huh. kind of that missing piece, what brings it all together and lets it function smoothly as an environment. And so many companies are sort of backing into a runtime. Mm -hmm. So they go build an agent and then they realize, oh, we need to manage state. And then they go build yeah. something to help manage state. And then, oh, we, we need the, you know, the prompt to be dynamic because it could change. And, oh, we need RAG. Oh, we need search. And they just keep building upon what I would say is a private environment for this one agent, right? Yeah. And somebody else goes and builds another agent and they recreate that small little environment for that agent. And it's so redundant, right? And you're just creating this massive tech debt, slowly, slowly building without realizing it a runtime and not realizing that building a runtime is minimum one year and a million dollars. You've barely taken a chip out of the puzzle. And um, it's one thing to go into building a runtime consciously. It's another thing to be backing into it. It's very yeah. unlikely that those pieces will ultimately not need to be entirely refactored because you haven't thought about it from more of a top down. Are there reasons why an organization would need to build their own runtime from scratch versus looking for a vendor that has an established runtime that can, that yeah, can really meet funny. a lot of these needs? It's so funny how these questions, like whether it's Grok or Chat, you can answer better than I can. Like these are great questions <laughs> to go to your chat, GPT, yeah. you name it. And just talk about runtimes, tell them what company you have, ask them if it makes sense for you, ask if it makes sense to build your own runtime, ask if one reach is a good runtime, what is a mature runtime, what is an immature runtime, what would it cost to build one? Like all of these questions are, are oddly enough, very well handled in, in whatever LLM you choose to talk to. And to answer that question in a you know brief way, it's, it's just an extremely complex undertaking that's absolutely necessary to have, but absolutely unnecessary to build. And the only company that should ever consider building one is one that wants to get into the business of selling runtimes to other people, because okay. it really makes no sense to custom build a runtime when you could have applied all of those resources and time towards actually automating things that when you begin automating things in your company, you begin the process of 
that force multiplier effect of the more you automate, the more money you free up to automate more. Once you get into that fly flywheel, you have that huge advantage over any competitor because they can't catch you. You get this unreachable lead. They get exponential growth is what you're trying to create. Building a runtime is such a foundational thing you, that it's just a cost until you get it done. If you're lucky if you could spend a year, you'll probably spend two. And, and then you begin to monetize it after two years. And what have you actually gained? You're behind. Yeah, because anyone who's found a reliable runtime to use it has already automated themselves into a new stratosphere, in essence. Yep. So, And it sounds self-serving, but obviously I built it because I felt people need this and it makes sense. And if someday somebody comes out with an open source free runtime that rivals what we've created, mm -hmm. then obviously that would be a better approach. It w I don't think that's anytime soon because the investment that it takes to create that runtime, the millions and the time, you know, there's not too many companies that will invest and spend that time just to ultimately open source it. Well, and I think too, a runtime also can be a much more cost efficient way to, to work with AI because you can figure out ways to just pay for what you're using. You don't necessarily have to take everything on at once. It allows you to kind of chunk it out a little bit and, and really just focus on, on what you need to accomplish certain tasks. Yeah. You, you get started right away, um, mm -hmm. on starting to actually build out an ecosystem, actually starting to institutionalize your knowledge, building canonical knowledge. Yeah. Making people more efficient at their jobs, learning what you need to learn. I don't think there will be very many companies in the future that will ever need to know how runtime works. The same way mm -hmm. I don't think very many companies in the future will need to know how an operating system works or how an LLM is trained. I just think that's a nice to know, but I don't think that's going to be necessary knowledge. What I think is going to matter is the processes of the business the sort of OAGI, right? Mm -hmm. Organizational AGI, the, the knowledge of your organization is what's critical. Well, excellent. So I think we've, I think we've done it. I think we've provided a pretty uh, focused overview of something very complex. We're going to follow up with, with another runtime episode that's really going to get into the nuts and bolts of all the individual components and how they fit together. So, so make sure that you are subscribed to this podcast because that will be coming shortly. And Rob, Thanks for taking the time today. And awesome. I hope everyone out there enjoyed this episode on runtimes. They really are a crucial piece of the puzzle. Yeah.